Garden tips from a green witch. It is getting close to last frost dates for a lot of people. Some of you further south than me probably have already reached that point. For us here, the last frost date averages around April 15th and 16th. Your last frost date is exactly what it sounds like. It is the average date in which your growing area gets its very last frost of the season. Therefore, any time after that is safe to put out your frost tender plants. However, it's very important to keep in mind that a last frost date is an average temperature based off of the last couple years and how things have worked. So it's not an exact science. And this is why I stress so often to new gardeners that you need to be present in your garden as often as you can to observe what's actually going on. If I were to go by my last frost date, I should be able to put my tomatoes and my peppers out in my garden next week. But if I take a moment to look around my garden and the area around it and see what nature is doing, I know that this year that might be a little too soon. Despite the fact that my onions and cold crops are doing nicely, I know that I forced them to do this. Over here, however, I have asparagus. And the fact that it's just now starting to come up tells me the soil temperature has not been quite as warm as it should be this time of year. If I look at the trees around me, not very many of them are in heavy bud yet. Both of those signs, as well as a few other things, tell me that the temperatures around here have not been staying consistently warm enough to get my soil temp up to where it should be to allow me to put my frost tender plants like peppers and tomatoes out into my garden yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold off for a couple more weeks. So two weeks have gone by and I'm glad that I waited to plant my tomatoes into the garden because the last couple weeks we've had some pretty crazy weather here in the Midwest. Temperatures dropping down back into the 30s, some crazy straight line winds, even some damaging hail. Today is still a little windy and overcast, but that means it is the perfect day for working in the garden. We're gonna go ahead and get our tomato beds prepped and ready and get these guys in the ground. Safe to say they are ready for it. I do my garden beds as a no-till style. All of the soil from last year has collected a little bit of weed seeds just from wind blowing. It's impossible to keep them out. And what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead, pick all the weeds out, and then we're gonna top dress these beds with some fresh compost. Time lapse didn't work, battery died, but as you can see, tomato bed is cleaned filled with soil and ready to be planted. I grow indeterminate varieties of tomatoes that will just continue to vine on a cattle panel trellis. And because I grow them on this trellis, I'm going to single stalk them and prune them off so I can plant them a little bit closer together than you normally would. I've got my tomatoes selected and approximately placed where I'm gonna plant them. As we've talked about before, tomatoes will grow roots all along their stem, so you wanna plant these babies deep. But what you wanna make sure that you're doing is taking off any leaf stems that are gonna be underground. Dig your hole and as weird as this may seem, I like to crack an egg, drop my tomato on in there, and just bury her back. Why did I put an egg in the hole? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure. It's just something that I was always taught to do and I've always done with my tomatoes. I think it has to do something with the yolks providing a little boost of nutrients to help those roots spread out in the soil. But either way, I always like to crack an egg in the hole. And since I have a bunch of chickens, I'm never short for eggs. One down and 11 more to go. And just like that, everybody's planted. Water them in very well. I recommend using a soft shower head nozzle for your hose or a watering can so you can water directly at the base of the tomato and try not to get the plant itself wet. As they grow, we'll come back and show you how to prune them and tie them off to the trellis properly. And in just a few weeks time, we'll be enjoying fresh homegrown garden tomatoes.